DJI makes some pretty bold claims when it comes to the battery performance of the new Osmo Nano, including one hour of 4K recording on the standalone camera, and when the battery's empty, being able to charge it back up to 80% in just 20 minutes. Well, today we're going to see how well the Osmo Nano lives up to those claims, and if it can do so without overheating. It's been about a week since I received my new Osmo Nano, and I have been putting it through all kinds of tests, including, of course, battery performance, which is the topic of today's video. So today we're going to take a look at some of those results, including how long can you really record for under real world conditions, how quickly can you get the camera charged back up again, and of course we're going to be comparing it to its main competitor, the new Insta360 Go Ultra. Now there is one other topic unfortunately we have to talk about and that is overheating, which seems to be a bit of an issue with the new Nano. Now this is a big topic and I'm actually planning on posting a separate video specifically on overheating, but in today's video we'll also talk a little bit about when overheating is most likely to occur and some of the things you can do to try to avoid it. Now there's a lot to cover, so as usual I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline, but first this. Before we continue with today's video, a quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased all of the equipment with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. Now, I do include links to the featured products as well as my recording equipment. These may appear throughout the video and in the video description. If you purchase using these links, I may make a commission, and this is what helps fund the channel, but rest assured there is no price disadvantage to you, you are getting the best price I can find. Alternatively, if you want to support the channel, you could follow this link and buy me a coffee. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So back to the video. With most cameras, when you run out of battery power, typically you swap out the battery for a fresh one and then you're good to go again. Not so with a camera like the Osmo Nano because it has a built-in battery. So when you run out of juice on your Osmo Nano, you have to plug in and wait for it to recharge. So with a camera like this, it's even more important that you get as much runtime as possible from a single charge and that you can charge up as quickly as possible. Now, when it comes to charging, also worth noting the camera itself does not have a USB port, so the only way to charge it is by using the Nano Vision Dock, which has about enough battery capacity to give it almost two full charges, or of course you can plug in the Vision Dock using its USB port in order to charge both the camera and the Vision Dock. Considering that the Osmo Nano has a sensor and processing power on a par with top-of-the-range action cameras, but a battery which is about a quarter of the size, the runtime claims are pretty impressive. According to DJI, using the camera on its own, you should be able to get up to 90 minutes of recording time, or when combined with the Vision Dock, up to 200 minutes. Now, it's important to note that this is based on recording at 1080p, 24 frames per second, and personally, I didn't buy this camera to run under those conditions. I bought this camera to run it at 4K, 30 frames per second, but even under those conditions, DJI says you should still expect to get around about an hour's worth of recording from the camera, which is still pretty impressive, and incidentally, an identical specification to what Insta360 quotes for its Go Ultra. Now, when it comes to running 4K30 in combination with the Vision Dock there, DJI does not make a specific runtime claim, but if we take that same two-thirds ratio, we should expect to get at least two hours of recording time at 4K30. When it comes to charging performance, the only claim that I can find is that you can charge the camera from 0 to 80% in 20 minutes, although it's not made clear whether that means charging it from the battery of the Vision Dock or charging it from AC power, but we'll do both of those tests anyway. Okay, for our first runtime test, we are going to test the camera on its own. Regular viewers to the channel will recognize my just for fun camera setup. I have the camera set up recording itself in the mirror alongside a stopwatch. 
I have the snapshot enabled, so as soon as I hit the button, it will power on and start recording. And I have it set to 4K, 30 frames per second, with all what I would consider normal settings on the camera. This is a relatively cool basement room. The temperature here is around about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, so I'm hoping that we will not see any incidences of overheating. But let's go ahead and get it started and see what happens. So just over 46 minutes of runtime at 4K 30 frames per second. And for comparison, when I did the same test using similar settings on Insta360's Go Ultra, I got a pretty similar result at 47 minutes. And also worth noting when I performed the same test a couple of years ago on DJI's own Action 2, I got around 40 minutes. So we got about 15% more runtime on the Osmo Nano. Still, you may be wondering whatever happened to 60 minutes of runtime at 4K 30 frames per second. Well, if you look at the small print accompanying that DJI claim, you'll notice that this was achieved using what is called endurance mode. Now, I don't have all the details on what is all included in endurance mode. DJI doesn't provide a lot of information here. But what I can tell you is that when you enable endurance mode, it automatically drops your bitrate from the high setting to the standard setting, which is about half the bitrate. And it also restricts you to 8-bit color. So overall, you're going to have a lower quality video. Now with endurance mode enabled, I reran the test and I was actually able to exceed DJI's claim, getting around about 66 minutes of runtime before my battery ran out. And once again, if we compare this to the Insta360 Go Ultra, with their endurance mode enabled, I was able to get 55 minutes. Although it's important to point out that with the Insta360 endurance mode, it does not reduce the bitrate. And one final note here, when recording with the standalone camera at 4K 30 frames per second, whether in standard mode or endurance mode, at no time did we experience any overheating issues with the Osmo Nano. Okay, for our second test, we now have the camera attached to the vision dock and both of which are fully charged. Once again, we have it set up for 4K 30 frames per second with everything that I would consider normal settings on the camera. I'm gonna start it using the snapshot. So let's see what we get. So having managed 46 minutes on its own, when we paired the camera to the vision dock after just 30 minutes, the camera overheated, stopped the recording and shut down. So apparently the combination of 4K recording together with being simultaneously charged by the vision dock is just too much for the camera to handle. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail regarding the overheating. I want to stay focused on the runtime test. So I gave the camera a good 30 to 40 minutes to cool down, and then I restarted the test. And in the second run, I got just short of 32 minutes before once again the camera overheated, stopped the recording, and shut down. So once again, I gave the camera a good 30 to 40 minutes to cool down, and I started a third recording. And on the third run, I got almost an hour's worth of 4K recording. The reason being that by the time I started the third run, the Vision Dock battery was down to just around about 10%, which was enough to give it around about 15 minutes worth of recording time before the Vision Dock was fully depleted, at which point the camera with 100% battery took over on its own and was able to make it to one hour total recording time. And altogether, when I add up those three runs, I was able to get just over two hours of total recording time at 4K 30 frames per second. 
And here too, if we compare that result against the Insta360 Go Ultra, when I performed the same test on the Go Ultra, I also got right around two hours of total recording time, but importantly in the case of the Go Ultra, this was a single continuous recording without any interruptions due to overheating. Now I did perform the same test, so camera plus vision dark, 4K 30 frames per second, but this time with the endurance mode enabled. And with those settings, not only was I able to get a longer runtime, around 2 hours and 25 minutes, but more importantly this was achieved as a single continuous recording without any interruptions due to overheating. Now the Insta360 Go Ultra did slightly better in this test, coming in at 2 hours and 38 minutes, and of course here too we had no incidences of overheating. But let's once again get back to those performance claims, in particular the 200 minutes total recording time. Now that particular claim is based on recording at 1080p, 24 frames per second with endurance mode turned on, so of course we had to run that test as well. And here too, not only was I able to equal DJI's performance claim, but beat it by some margin, achieving over 218 minutes of recording time at 1080p. When it comes to the charging tests, there are four tests that we're going to be doing. First of all, we're going to charge the camera from the battery of the Vision Dock. Here we're going to place the camera on a fully charged Vision Dock, not plugged in of course. And in this test, we're looking to match that DJI claim of 0 to 80% in 20 minutes. For test two, we're going to charge the camera from AC power. So once again, we're going to plug the camera into a fully charged vision dock, but this time the vision dock will be plugged into AC power so that all of the charging power goes to the camera. And once again, we are looking for zero to 80% in 20 minutes. For test number three, we're going to charge both the camera and the vision dock together. So here we're taking a fully depleted camera connected to a fully depleted vision dock and plugging those together into AC power. And frankly, I have no idea what to expect in this test. And for the fourth and final test, we're going to be charging up just the vision dock on its own. And here too, we have no specific performance claim that we're going to be comparing against. So when it comes to charging the camera, interestingly the results from tests 1, 2 and 3 were all pretty much the same. So regardless of whether you are charging the camera from the vision dock battery, charging it from AC power or charging the camera and vision dock at the same time, in all three of those tests the camera was charged from 0 to 80% well within the claimed 20 minutes. In fact it reached 80% in just 15 minutes. Now as far as getting the camera all the way to 100% charge is concerned, here DJI makes no specific claims. I noticed in my testing by the time we reached 25 minutes we were typically around about 97-98% charged. And as is typical with a lot of cameras that final 2 or 3% just took forever, but that's really not something I'm concerned about. And again, comparing to the competition here, the Insta360 Go Ultra is a little bit faster with a claimed 0 to 80 charge time of just 12 minutes, something that I was able to confirm during my testing. When it comes to charging up the vision dock, we did see a bit of a difference between test 3 and test 4. When charging up just the vision dock on its own in test 4, we were able to charge it all the way to 80% in a pretty impressive 17 minutes. And when charging up the camera and vision dock together, not surprisingly this took a little bit longer, with the dock reaching 80% charge at around 28 minutes. One final test to talk about is something I call the Quick Charge Challenge. Now if you want further details about this test and see how other popular action cameras have performed, check out this video on the channel. But basically the test is as follows. We take a fully depleted camera and we give it exactly 15 minutes of charging using the highest power charging the camera will accept. And then we see how much recording time using 4K 30 frames per second and all normal settings on the camera. And from that we can calculate the record to charge ratio, which is basically how many minutes of recording time can you get for each minute of charging time. Now for the charging portion of the test, it's hard to pinpoint the exact charge level we reach because the charge display goes up in large increments, but I'm estimating somewhere between 75 and 80%.
And with that 80% at 4K30, we were able to achieve just under 33 minutes of total recording time, giving the Osmo Nano a record to charge ratio in this test of just over two to one. Now that places it in fourth place in my all time record to charge ratio rankings, but perhaps more importantly behind the Insta360 Go Ultra, which in the same test achieved 2.5 to one. As I mentioned earlier, I still have a lot of testing to do and I do plan on posting a more detailed video focused specifically on the topic of overheating with the Osmo Nano, but let me just share a few of my initial findings. Now, first of all, if you are using the camera in standalone mode, so detached from the vision dock, in this configuration, I only experience overheating problems when using one of the more demanding recording modes, for example, 4K 120 slow motion, or standard video at 4K 60 frames per second, or 4K 4x3 at 50 frames per second. As an example here, when using 4K at 120 frames per second, I would typically get around about six minutes of recording time before the camera shut down due to overheating. However, when using the more normal recording conditions, such as 4K 30 frames per second, I was able to record without any instances of overheating. However, when paired to the vision dock, it's a very different story. It appears that when in this configuration, the camera has a hard time recording and being charged by the vision dock at the same time. So even when recording in less demanding video modes, such as 4K 30 frames per second, we experienced overheating. In fact, even when using endurance mode, although the camera never actually shut down due to overheating, I did get periodic messages that charging had been paused in order to prevent the camera from overheating. So what are some of the things you can do to try to avoid overheating? Well, probably one of the most important things is to ensure airflow over the camera. Now, although all of my tests were done in relatively cool conditions, around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, they were done indoors without much airflow. And I do plan on doing some additional testing to see if I can improve the overheating situation by adding some airflow. Secondly, try focusing on getting your shots with the camera detached from the vision dock. In my testing, it performed a lot better when detached from the vision dock, so try focusing on using it as a standalone camera, and when you're done recording, attach it to the vision dock in order to charge it back up again. And as a last resort, in order to help reduce overheating, you should opt for less demanding settings. This includes things like the use of endurance mode, lowering the bit rate, lowering the color bit depth, lowering your resolution or frame rate, which in general are things you don't want to do and are going to result in lower quality video, but in some cases it may be your only choice in order to get the shot. Now, as mentioned, I do plan on covering this topic in a lot more detail, so be on the lookout for that video in the near future. So that covers it for battery performance, endurance, and overheating on the new DJI Osmo Nano. As far as the battery performance is concerned, I think the Nano definitely lives up to DJI's claims and overall provides a strong performance. However, there is that niggling issue of the overheating and as mentioned, I will be covering that in a future video. So that wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, if you want to share your experience or make suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching.